Good morning. Uh, welcome to this city of Mahakal and uh, respected chairpersons for the thanks for the nice introduction. I think uh, the mind of Dr. Bansi, uh, something is, um, uh, it appears to me he thinks 10 years ahead. This is the first, this topic, I never thought that he will give me to talk on the power of CME. I, but anyway, let us see, this is a new topic for me. So these days, this term, the CME, uh, is simply being refined and could be replaced with the CPD. So what is the difference with the CPD and the CME? A continuous professional development. This is the period of education and training of doctors commencing after, complete, after completion of basic medical education and postgraduate training, thereafter extending throughout each doctor's professional working life. But if you only concentrate on CME, this is defined as any activity that serves to maintain, develop or increase the knowledge, this is important, skill and professional performance and relationship. Remember this term, relationship, this is also very, very important. That a physician uses to provide services for patients, the public or the professionals. The objectives are quite clear that this is what gives you the provide opportunity, design and implement educational programs, uh, to prepare, disseminate the appropriate self-learning materials, and to develop print and non-print learning resources. And the contents accordingly can vary. But uh, these are some of the few things where the effective CPD should have, like three things, the needs assessment. Assessment is very, very important. Appropriate learning activities and follow-up learning, follow-up of the learning. Most In most of the conferences, this is lacking. So, when you discuss about the power of the CME, there are few questions you must ask. Number one, is there any evidence that particular method of delivering CME are more effective to imparting your knowledge, changing physician attitude, acquiring skill, and a changing physician practice behavior or changing clinical practice outcomes? The second, the outcomes produced by CME today that I am happy at this time so many audience is here, but whether this outcome produced by CME persists over time greater than or equal to 30 days, that is important. And what is the evidence from the systemic reviews? Is there any reviews or any studies? So, other question could be the what sort of audience, what are the factors, external factors, reported validity and reliability of the methods. So, this is how the CME works from the health care providers, continuing medical education, updating medical knowledge, rapidly evolving discussions where I am showing you the WhatsApp, input from the best brands and exported to CME India wave. This is one thing which I have done which I will tell you later. And you know about the CME credits, intellectual exposure, networking, updating, these are the few things. So world of CME is very, very important. But still today, globally there is no consensus on what CPD should be mandatory, like who should the regulate the CPD? And how should it be implemented? How should it be quantified and monitored? and how, whether the CPD activities should be formally approved by quality and so many other things. So, but I think usually the one of one desire to maintain professional quality is the strongest motivation to pursue lifelong learning. Whatever you do, unless and until you have got a desire to develop, you cannot do anything. So, power of CME lies in the ability to bridge the gap between the knowledge and the practice. Whatever you are getting today in the Diabetes India today, if you are going to practice, that becomes successful. And medical knowledge and practice are constantly evolving. You know, healthcare professionals need to keep pace 
with these changes to provide the best possible care to their patients. And CME provides healthcare professionals with the latest information and skills they need to stay at the forefront of the field. So this definitely has lots of power and benefits like improving the patient outcome, professional development, compliance with the regulatory requirements, very important these days, networking and collaboration, and this should be cost effective too. But right for when you search the literature about the CME power to date, a little has been done to comprehensively synthesize the evidence regarding the effectiveness of the CME. Whatever the I can could get, see one paper here, very recent paper 2021, the impact of formal continuing medical education, okay, do conferences, works of rounds and other traditional continuing medical activities, change physical behavior or healthcare outcomes. I will not go in details of all these things, but see here, see here the finally the conclusions that this study indicates different impact of e-learning based on training form and a target audience. This was done in the TB setting, the tuberculosis setting, and clinical and primary care health workers. E-learning interventions are associated with a higher TB knowledge work. E-learning, remember e-learning. But traditional face-to-face -face training has no significant impact on all types of medical staff. So there, what you get here, they have found that e-learning is much better in that way. And when they tried to see what are the barriers to obtaining CME by clinician type, you can see a lots of information sources. You are well aware and you will well aware about all this fear. The conclusions from this paper that the clinicians report that expense and travel, that is very important. The first important thing that emerged was the expense and the travel Time are the biggest barriers to any CME and time and money support is limited and not increasing and on, online search and emails are the most frequently used sources of information about the CME and those who organize and market CME should explore options for that also. So e-learning provides a unique opportunity for addressing challenges of CME and you have seen this during the COVID-9 pandemic. Everyone is aware about this. If you see here, what are the actions suggested to enhance the CME activity? So at the top, you can see the optimize the location. And Dr. Bharat Sabu, Dr. Bansi, and all our this team of Diabetes India, they have kept, kept this topic and this CME at a so exotic place. So location is important, cost, everything is there. And I really salute these persons who have kept this all the things which I have shown here. So effectiveness of uh, continuing medical education, this shows you about the 68 citations. I have taken this conclusion from the 136 articles and nine systemic reviews. And this says, despite the low quality of the evidence today, the CME appears to be effective at the acquisition and retention of knowledge attitude, skills, behavior, and clinical outcomes and more research is needed. So future studies and future research is also needed. So if, I, if you see a paper again, uh, this is the 2023 paper, evaluating the impact of continuing medical education in the interdisciplinary team and novel targeted approach, this shows that the findings revealed that primary care physicians had markedly improved knowledge. And the study reported on difference between these uh, different specialties in an intention to change clinical practice, confidence in clinical practice and remaining educational gaps. So I think this paper tells the whole about the power of the CME. And this shows that online medical education highly effective in adoption of the evidence-based medicine these days. So I will not go in details about how much credit hours you need in India. I think uh, you can see here it is already shown that the from the 2021 MSI came, then the NMC, and all doctors and medical practitioners are required to gain 30 credit hours in five years. This is an average, maximum six credit hours by attending various conferences. CME workshop till the age of 65 years is a bar here, you can see. 
and get their KMC registration. So this is how this is being done. Uh, but so the National Medical Commission and the State Medical Councils, they are the bodies which do this. I will not go in details. I have got only four minutes left now, but this is available. Uh, but remember, the CPD will be not accredited if it is organized by a drug equipment company by promotion of the drug or equipment will not be entertained or considered. So this is also important point. You can see the how we get the credit hours. Their points are there and these are the portions not reimbursable. So CPD is different. It is autonomous and training is seldom supervised by a long duration. So if you only discuss about the CPD, there is no a single correct way of doing a CPD. The content, contest and the process. But CME power play techniques are, eventually we need to move away from counting credit points towards the process of self-accreditation and the reflection. This is a very important development which is happening. If there is no single best way. So how to do all these things? We have seen everything that is how impactful it was in the COVID times. So I think lastly, there are many adverse effects too. Like see here, in the, in the RSSDI case discussion group, that Prabhat Agrawal is there, uh, he commented how there was a single person and he is deliberating his talk. And one person from Dr. Manohar Bengaluru wrote that we are overdoing the CME business. So lots of things are happening. And there are many papers now saying that the medical conference is dead, long live the medical conference. So what are lots of things are going on? So when CPD becomes heavily dependent on a support from a drug and a pharmaceutical companies, the ethical interpinning of the medical confession profession may be compromised. You are well about our diet, so I'll not discuss about that. So you should uh, think about the barriers and changing face of CMA is emerging, remember. And this is one point which for which people give me credit is CMA India. It was 2016 when I thought why should not the thoughts of should be used as a medical education system. And I started with one group of 256 that time and it become the 24 by 7 CMA possible. Many of you are in the group, you are know about its things. And then in every paper all over India, this was credited that this is the best way to do the CME. And when the COVID time we published our CME India COVID guidelines, in one week there were 4.5 lakhs of the download of the CME worldwide. And this from the 15th page of the Google, the ranking became the one. And today we have over 3,000 persons doing this. Then we did a research on the CM India group, which clearly shows the difference in key, which is the best resource. You can see the CME WhatsApp group. Those who are there, they say this is one of the best resource and they get a instant help. Even if from a remote place, something, some problem is posted and most of the super specialists over what they give the inputs and it is shared among the all groups. So this is how it is working. I have only one minute to left, but lots of things we are doing that. And this paper is not published at now, but we will publish this paper. And then lots of things will come out of that. So I think uh, if you are the replace, if you would just one question was, it does CAB India WhatsApp group replace other resources of learning or supplement? I think you can see it is supplement. But uh, it is a powerful tool for medical education. You can see 94% responded yes. So lastly, I will uh, end here saying that the medical science is a dynamic and it's essential for the doctor to become the acquainted with the advantage. And this CME power lies in the unique capability to deal with challenges of tremendous advantage of medicine and the application to clinical practice by motivation. And what's of CME seems to play an important role in future CME and hybrid CME looks a new avatar. So I will think I think I will end here. Thank you very much. Thank you.